Okay, section 2.7 limits at infinity. When considering limits, as x approaches either positive or negative infinity, we look for the behavior of the function as x values approach positive infinity or negative infinity. If the limit as x approaches positive infinity for your function has a value, L, the line y equals L is a horizontal asymptote. So if you approach infinity, positive infinity, and your graph reaches a numerical value L, you will have a line that you are approaching, a horizontal asymptote. The same thing happens if you have a line that you're approaching for a limit as x approaches negative infinity. For example, you've got a graph, just do a sketch, where your function maybe does something like this. And as you approach positive infinity, the values get closer and closer to some point, some L value. Uh, let's just for the sake say that it's 2 and in the other direction your values are getting closer and closer to 0 you would write for this function f of x you would write the limit as x approaches positive infinity of this function approaches 2 and the limit as x approaches negative infinity of this function approaches 0 A function can also approach an infinite limit. For example, if you have the function f of x and something like x cubed, as the limit approaches, as x approaches infinity, the values get bigger and bigger and bigger. And as you approach negative infinity of the same function, the values get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, as well, limits at infinity either positive or negative infinity, cannot exist. And we can see that through an example like um, y equals cos x. So the cosine graph oscillates. It's not a very, very good picture of a cosine graph, but the cosine graph oscillates between positive 1 and negative 1, and it just keeps doing that oscillation. For this, we would say the limit as you approach infinity of uh, this function does not exist. And the same for the limit of negative, so you could write plus or minus. In general, 
we have a few rules for n is bigger than zero. The limit as x approaches infinity of x to the power of n is always positive infinity, and the limit as x approaches infinity of x to the negative n, which is the same as the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x to the positive n, is always equal to 0. If n belongs to the whole number set, so 1, 2, 3, not 0, sorry, 1, 2, 3, etc., then if the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x to the n, we have a couple of cases. It can be positive infinity if n is even, like x squared, x to the fourth, and it's negative infinity if n is odd, like we saw in the cubic example earlier. And the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x to the negative n is the same as the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 over x to the positive n, and this always tends to 0. As I get smaller and smaller, uh, sorry, larger and larger values on the bottom, it doesn't matter if they are uh, positive infinity on the bottom or negative infinity on the bottom, I get values closer and closer and closer to 0. Let's use this to try an example. So let's try and calculate the limit as x goes to infinity of 5x cubed minus 2x squared, all divided by 10x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 10. So first of all, notice that if you apply this limit to the numerator, using substitution rules, wow, this thing seems to go off to infinity. And if you do the same for the denominator, you also get infinity. But as we learned in a previous class, this is of the form infinity over infinity, and we might be able to use another approach. Let's take a look at that. So our equation was calculating the limit as x goes to infinity of 5x cubed minus 2x squared over 10x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 10. And the trick with doing these is to divide each term by the highest power of x in the denominator. And in this case, that is a division by x to the power of fourth, uh, 4. And if I do that to each term, I get the limit as x goes to infinity of 5x cubed over x to the fourth minus 2x squared over x to the fourth over 10x to the fourth over x to the fourth minus 3x squared over x to the fourth plus 10 over x to the fourth. And doing a little bit of simplification, I can now do that limit to the numerator. and to the denominator. And a number of these terms become equal to 0. In fact, on the numerator, I now apply the limit, and I get 0 minus 0. On the denominator, I now apply the limit. I get 10 minus 0 plus 0 which is 0 over 10, 
or 0. Of course, there is a way to generalize what happens with different polynomials or different functions divided by other functions, uh, and this is how you do that. So, in general for this, dividing this way produces the limit as x goes to either positive or negative infinity of some big function. And this is looking complicated, but you have a coefficient in front of the biggest degree of x, and then another coefficient in front of the next biggest degree of x, and that continues all the way down to your constant term, which we'll call a0. And we do the same on the bottom, so you have a constant, we'll use m for here, with a different degree possibly on the bottom, and b for your next term, and your next term all the way down to your constant term. This simplifies to, you can actually simply take out your coefficient, your leading coefficient, so this value here is your leading coefficient, as is this value here, your leading coefficient on the denominator, and you can apply the limit as x goes to positive or negative infinity of the difference between n and m as an exponent of x. Let's see how that works. If we have the limit as x goes to infinity of 3x to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 10 over 6x to the fourth minus 3x cubed takes longer to write out the questions than do them sometimes. Minus 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus x plus 1. I take the leading coefficients. I write them as a fraction. That can be reduced, by the way. And I apply the limit as x goes to infinity of x to the power of, and now I subtract these. So n is the 4 on the numerator, take away the 4 on the denominator, I get 1 half of the limit as x goes to infinity of x to the 0, which is 1, this is equal to 1. I apply the infinity, still is equal to 1, and so the limit of this is 1 half. That means that there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals one half.